Today we're on page 9 of the AP Chemistry Chapter 12 packet and we're going to continue to talk about mechanisms and now we're going to relate mechanisms to rate laws. So you can actually find the rate law of a reaction from the mechanism. We're going to actually work a little backwards here and give you the rate law and then ask you which mechanism is correct either number one or number two on this page. So we're going to start with mechanism number one. We're going to recognize that in this mechanism we have some intermediates. So we're going to just look at those crossing off to make sure that our rate law, I mean our overall reaction will match the overall reaction. So here's the overall reaction that I gave you in the beginning. This is the reaction. This is a mechanism possible for that, re that reaction. So first when you cancel out all the intermediates you're going to see that you have two NOs that are left, you have two H2s that are left, you have two waters that are left, and you have an N2 that's left, and that is going to be exactly the same as the overall reaction that's given at the top of the page. So with a mechanism, the first thing you want to make sure of is that it all adds up to the correct reaction. Okay, so the overall reaction does match the overall reaction. So that's the first thing. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the slow step. The slow step is, remember, the rate determining step. Rate determining step. From that step, you can write the rate law. So the rate is going to equal K. And then you're going to find each of these raised to their coefficient power. So since this is a 1 and since this is a 1, that's going to be the exponent for each one. Okay, now we've never done this before. We've never taken exponents and made them the, um, I'm sorry, the coefficients. We've never taken coefficients and made them exponents. The only time you can ever do that is when you have a mechanism. Okay, you can never do it from the overall equation that I have in red here. You can't do that from here. You can only do it from the individual little steps in the mechanism. That's where you can take the coefficient and make it into an exponent. Okay, so this would be the rate law so far. And then what we have to do is we have to double check that each of the reactants in the rate law are the actual reactants of the equation. So see how NO is one of the originals and how H2 is one of the originals. So now my rate law um, is done. In other words, this is the rate law based on the uh, mechanism above. The only problem is that this does not match the rate law up here. Because the rate law up there says second power right here. And this one only says first power right here. So this actually is not right. In other words, this cannot be the slow step because according to that being the slow step, this blue here is the rate law. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take mechanism number two. So let's move up to mechanism number two and you'll see that the only difference is is that the slow step is now the second step. All right. So if you went through and crossed off all your intermediates, you would get the same exact overall equation. 2NO plus 2H2 yield 2H2O and N2. And this was canceled out. Oops. This was canceled out here and here. And this was canceled out here and here. Okay, now we're going to write the rate law based on this slow step. So I have N and I have NO. So I'm going to take rate equals K times concentration of N to the first times concentration of NO to the first. Even though I had crossed off N here as an intermediate, it doesn't mean it's not there. It just means that it could be canceled out for the overall. But it is part of this second step, and NO is part of the second step, so I put them each in the rate law. Now what we're going to notice is that N is an intermediate. It's not an original NO reactant or H2 reactant, so you cannot leave the N in the rate law because you can't even measure that concentration because it's an intermediate. So now the question is from where did I get N? I got it here 
and then that came from this NO and this H2 to the first, to the first as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute that. So this is NO to the first times H2 to the first. And then I'm going to carry over all the other ones that I had already. So NO to the first, this is K, and this is rate. Now, what I could do is call this, if you want to be technical, K2, because that was from the second step. And then I'm going to introduce, so this is a K2, and then I'm going to introduce a K1 from the first step. And so overall, when I'm all done, I'm going to have an overall K. I'll just write this all in red here. So the rate is equal to just an overall K. And then I'm going to group these two together. So it's going to be concentration of NO squared times concentration of H2 to the first. And this does agree with the rate law that we got above. That does agree. So that means that mechanism two is the correct mechanism. This is the correct mechanism. And that this is indeed the slow step. The slow step is the second step because as we said, we matched it to the original rate law up here. So this rate law up here matches the one down below. Okay, now we're going to move on to the next page. We're now on chapter 12, page 10 of the AP Chemistry Packet, and we're continuing to talk about mechanisms. And now what we're going to do is we're going to confirm that the mechanism here is the correct one for the rate law given. So we're first going to look at intermediates, and we're going to see that we have an HCl here, two of them, and then two there, so they're going to cancel out each other. And then this C, Cl3 is going to cancel out that one. So when you rewrite this, you're going to have a Cl2, which was this, and a CHCl3, which is that. And that's going to equal, or yield rather, an HCl plus a CCl4. So again, we want to make sure that the overall matches the overall, so that's good. Now we're going to try to write the rate law for this. So remember when we write the rate law, we look for the slow step because that's the rate determining step. In other words, the rate depends on that step. And what does that step have? That step has Cl and CHCl3. They each have a coefficient of 1, so therefore their exponent will now be 1. Okay, then we check and see, are these actually reactants in the overall? So Cl is not right, because Cl is not the same as Cl2. So this cannot stay, but the CHCl3 can stay. So what I need to do is I need to get rid of the Cl. So the Cl is formed here. But you have to pay attention because this is an equilibrium. So when we have equilibrium, which is going to be the next chapter coming up, you have to remember, hopefully you remember from last year, that the equilibrium constant is equal to the concentration of the reactants raised to their powers over the, pr I'm sorry, the products. The products raised to their powers over the reactants raised to their powers. So the product here is Cl, and we're going to raise that to the second power. And the reactant is Cl2 and we're going to raise that to the first power. And now what we need to do is we need to solve for Cl to the first. That's what we need. So when you do the math for that, you're going to get Cl squared equals Keq times concentration of Cl2 to the first. But then you want to square root the right side and square root the left side because you need to get the Cl by itself. So now I'm going to substitute this mess for that. So if I rewrite this, it's going to say rate equals blue K. I'm going to call that K2 because it came from step two. And then now I'm going to substitute for the CL the equilibrium constant KEQ raised to the one half 
times concentration of Cl2 raised to the 1 half. That's my substitution. And then I'm going to just copy over the original CHCl3 to the first. And now remember, you could group all of these two Ks together to just give you one overall constant. So you're going to have rate equals K, the overall K, times concentration of Cl2 to the 1 half, times concentration of CHCl3 to the first. And this rate law is the correct matching rate law for what we see up there.